Chelsea Football Club have paid a lot of money for Mikhailo Mudrik and Mudrik is here getting at me. Yes, Mudrik defeats Georgia, my motherland and decides to absolutely put on a masterstroke. Hey, the type of performance that you would expect from Mikhailo Mudrik when you pay him for 70 million euros, not including add-ons. We'll talk about it and then he sends a message to everybody. Literally everybody on Instagram. Then we need to talk about Nicholas Jackson. Jackson gets his first goal for Senegal after 17 appearances which blew my mind and finally we need to talk about Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez there is a massive decision and a massive gauntlet that I'm gonna set to you. I need Enzo Fernandez against Liverpool to step up. A lot of people are asking for him to be dropped. I did a community post and when I tell you the majority is working for you to get dropped I mean it. I'm gonna tell you who they want starting instead of you and we're gonna talk about his fit into this team but before we get started I need you lot to do me a massive a favor when you come to the Kafka's you Mecca say Sukasa. So the first thing you have to do is take your shoes off and hit that like button. That's the equivalent, right? You come into my house, you take the shoes off. So hit that like button. A thousand likes goes a magic way, and we are so close to 37,000. I've been saying this three days in a row. Hurry up and subscribe. Let's get started with the news. All right, so we need to talk about what's going on with Mikhailo Mudrik because Fabrizio has basically come out and once again reinstated something that we already knew. But there were rumors that were murmuring from sources that I didn't believe, hence why I didn't talk about it, saying that Chelsea are open to sending him on loan. Fabrizio has once again come out and reiterated the following. Mudrik's intention is to stay at Chelsea. Mudrik's agents are not working on a move to take him away from Chelsea, nor is Chelsea looking to get rid of him. Enzo Maresca has sent him a chance, has given him instructions, and Mudrik now is working purely focused on the incentive of proving him right. And for me, this is everything Mudrik can do. Mudrik, every single training session, every single time he's on that pitch, needs to do whatever he can to make sure that he proves to Enzo Maresca I deserve more minutes. Mudrik joined Chelsea for 70 million euros. Since then, he's had 66 appearances, seven goals and seven assists. I'm not harsh in saying when I say speak for everyone, that's pathetic. When I pay 70 million for a player, right? I don't care what the context is. I expect more than seven seven goals in 66 games from a left winger. I'm sorry, it's the reality. However, context is important and sometimes we have to give it, right? Mudrik is the type of player that he really needed a lot of work. You signed the diamond in the rough potentially with all his attributes, with his explosion, with his ball striking, with his pace, with his ability for vision, to see this game in an open manner, attempt passes and fearlessness. However, what you realized is, Mudrik didn't have the intangible, the IQ to know how to get himself into the game, to know different positions, to know when to come short, to go deep. And even to this day now, Mudrik really struggles to utilize his greatest asset. That's his pace in running in behind. Hardly ever uses it. He always wants everything in defeat. However, yesterday, he played against my motherland. He played against Georgia, and we've been fairly good in the last two years. We've actually gone to the Euros, not embarrassed ourselves. We made a bang in the Euros where people started telling me, yo, your country is good. And I said, I know, I can't believe it myself. Nation League started, we won the first two games. And we're playing Ukraine, who, are, who have lost both of theirs. And I said, we keep their forward line quiet. We are going to win this game comfortably. Mudrik decided to turn up. And Mudrik had one of his better games that I've seen in recent times. 86 minutes. Yes, he had a low uh, XG game, however, his goal was wonderful. He literally displayed everything that's right and wrong with Mudrik. He gave the ball away, it went to one of our players, our player got dispossessed, Mudrik picks it up. You know those little like dribbles that he does like players of cones because he's so quick with his feet? He dribbles in and out, outside of the box, cuts in, shoots. Beautiful bottom corner. Wonderful finish, low XG chance. He capitalized there. Everything that's good about his game was there to see. He had a few opportunities where he got the ball, ran out our fullback, left foot crosses, good areas, no one crashing the box. Honestly, all in all, very good performance from Mikhailo Mudrik. I was very impressed. Off the ball, amazing. Genuinely working hard for his team, doubling up on the fullback when he was going forward and the winger. Just like a good professional performance from Mudrik. And it begs me to ask the question, how long do Chelsea stay patient with Mudrik? Because look, this is Chelsea Football Club. We are in the business of winning stuff. How long can you be patient with a project? How long can you hold him back because you want to keep winning stuff, but at the same time, stunt his development? I think a loan would be best for business. A lot of people don't. 
A lot of people believe the embarrassment of sending a 70 million pound uh, euro player on loan, the embarrassment of Mudri going on loan after he was proclaimed to be our savior and our number 10, the embarrassment of what the club would have to deal with if he goes away and flops because then he comes back and you can't resell it. However, I think you have to take the risk. Life is about calculated risks. And if you're not willing to take it now, you're in big trouble. After the game, Mudrik done something that is very classic 2024 footballers. He went online, put a picture up where he's doing this. Basically, I can't hear you lot now. I dropped a good performance. Well done, bro. Well done. You dropped the performance against my Georgia. A team that, in my opinion, is good but nothing special. I need a consistency. Then you can start doing that. One game is not the epitome. I actually think there is a lot of respect for Brennan Johnson, who came off Instagram and since then has been slapping goals. The, if you're off these social media platforms and you focus on your game and that's the only thing you care about, trust me, that has more impact on your on the pitch. This Putting these kind of pictures, I don't get it. It's not for me. I might be very old school, but I'm only 28 years old. Huh? Nicholas Jackson has finally scored his first goal yesterday, and he scored it for Senegal after 17 appearances. The goal was classic trademark Nicholas Jackson, carrying the ball, dribbling past players, scruffy shot, and the keeper fumbles it in. But it's because he's so unorthodox in the way that he strikes the ball, and that he strikes the ball so early, it caught the keeper out. So Nico gets off the start and I was really shocked that he has a one goal in 17 games for Senegal like considering he plays for Chelsea he's a starter for them and well he's only recently become a starter for them actually he's always been coming off the bench I would have thought that this player would have been of the quality to start for Senegal however he's got Sadio Mane next to him he, he's a developing player my question now is can he kick on because the reality is Senegal will need him to kick on Jackson will need to kick on and he needs to replicate this form for Chelsea going forward. He's had a good start to the season. Chelsea depend on him in the long run and Nkunku's just waiting to take his spot. We know Nkunku's already scored a goal. So great news for Nicholas Jackson. Well done, I'm really proud of you. Now on to the next story. This next story here is regarding Enzo Fernandez. Look, we've got an Enzo Fernandez problem, whether people want to accept it or not, because a lot of the fan base is really anti Enzo Fernandez at this moment in time. They believe Enzo Fernandez came in as a 105 million pound player. There is an expectation you straight away perform well or based on that value. I, I always ask the question, what is a 105 million pound performance? Because if you can give me that, then at least I have a checkbox of what Enzo has done. A lot of people say I make excuses for Enzo. I don't make excuses for Enzo. I believe I know his limitations and I know his strengths and I'm actually very objective when I speak about him. I think Enzo really struggles to cover big grounds. I think Enzo's passing at the times is underutilized based on the ability that he has. I think Enzo Fernandez, IQ wise, sometimes doesn't understand the game to the level that people think he does. But at the same time I go, he's 22 years old. He's only played two seasons of full European football. Am I expecting him to be the complete package no but at the same time when i pay 105 million pounds i understand when people get frustrated but why are we here we're here today because we've got liverpool coming up and a lot of people would say enzo fernandez needs to get dropped i would say i don't think he does purely based on the fact that enzo fernandez yes he's going to be traveling back from argentina however caicedo is traveling back from ecuador so both of them are going to do a long distance caicedo for me is a non-negotiable non he starts right he has to start the next question has to be do you risk romeo lavia do you throw romeo lavia in against liverpool because that is a huge game, right? We're gonna go into a midfield where we're gonna have to win that midfield battle. And for me, this is where it gets very interesting because under Klopp's Liverpool, where it's tussle and bustle, open midfield, everyone's running, I get it. Under Arnie Slot, everything's gonna be slower, it's gonna be more methodical, it's gonna be more tactical. So we're gonna have to win that midfield battle. Personally, and this is the big thing, if I do rotate Enzo, it's purely based on the fact that I think a midfield balance in one of those big six games of Caicedo and Lavia physically is amazing. Because Lavia can pass the ball, Caicedo can pass the ball. They both can get around the pitch quickly, they both can do both sides of the game to a good standard. Both defensively, even better than offensively. What I think Enzo has is that X factor, that initial bit of ingenuity, right? That straight away spark the ball OTT over the top. Liverpool Highline exploited. However, I think we need to be very calculated and very realistic about what we're putting in. I think this is a good problem to have. 
A lot of people are viewing it as it's a negative because people just want to shit on Enzo at the moment. They want to poo-poo all over him. They want to call him a smelly poo-poo. They say he's not good enough. I personally think this is, I welcome this kind of dis like discourse because all of a sudden we have Enzo, Caicedo, Lavia. Next year, Santos, four of them. There's going to be debates. People are going to have their preferences. So going into that Liverpool game, I definitely will go with Lavia and Caicedo because I just think we need that extra bit of physicality. But if we go with Lavia, uh, if we go with Caicedo and Enzo, I won't complain. If we go with Ke uh, Lavia and Enzo, I won't complain. I believe in those three midfielders. I think they're all good enough. I do think Enzo needs to step up a bit more in his performances. However, I'm here to praise him when he does well. And there have been numerous occasions this year that he has done well. But he's also had some stinkers, and I'm here to call that out as well. This is the Guff Guys View. Like I said, I've got a poll going, and you guys can go vote. It's on the community page. Furthermore, if you made it this far, yo, subscribe, because I really want to hit 37,000 and make my way to 40,000 by the end of the year. And without you lot, won't be able to that. Furthermore, there's one here where we need to talk. There's another video here for you guys to go watch. It's about England and how horribly they played and lost the other day. I break it down. I talk about um, Cole Palmer. I talk about Levi Colwell. Very Chelsea-related video. Go check it out. Go enjoy. Peace out. I'm out.